Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the structure of phospholipids, behaviour in water, the structure of the phospholipid bilayer, roles of the phospholipid bilayer, and then we'll finish with a summary. So a phospholipid is a similar molecule to a triglyceride. Again, it's a type of lipid, just like a triglyceride, and it has a very similar structure to the triglycerides. So if we take a triglyceride molecule, like this one here, it's made up of two main components. We've got a molecule at the start called glycerol, which is a type of alcohol, and then that's attached to three fatty acids. The difference between a triglyceride and a phospholipid is that one of the fatty acids is now taken away, and instead it's replaced by a phosphate molecule. So here we have a phospholipid, and you'll notice that now we only have two fatty acids, because one of them was removed. We have the original glycerol molecule still present, bound to those two fatty acids, and now we have this additional phosphate group, or phosphate molecule. And this is attached to glycerol, more or less on the other side to the fatty acids. The joining of the phosphate group onto the glycerol is a condensation reaction between a hydroxyl group, or an OH group, on the phosphoric acid, and on the glycerol. So looking at it in a molecular diagram, we've got the glycerol molecule here, and we can see the attachment to two fatty acids, again with the R representing those long hydrocarbon chains extending that way. And the glycerol now needs to attach to this phosphate group which is coming on towards its other side. So we call this total molecule here phosphoric acid. The phosphoric part relating to the idea that we've got this phosphorus element in the middle and the acid has lots of OH groups around as you can see. And in the coming together of these two molecules these two OH groups need to come in close contact and this will form a bond in a condensation reaction. In the reaction they form a phosphate ester bond and it forms a molecule of water. So now looking at this we have the original glycerol molecule here, the two fatty acids coming off this side, and now this phosphoric acid becomes a phosphate group which is now linked by a covalent bond to the glycerol. And this particular bond is known as the phosphate ester bond. Remember the link between the glycerol and the fatty acids was an ester bond we now call this a phosphate ester because it's an ester, but it's joined to a phosphate group. And obviously in any condensation reaction, we form a molecule of water. So the molecule of water is formed and it leaves as a product. The phosphate group, which is now joined, and the glycerol molecule, is called together the head of the phospholipid, and the fatty acid chains are known as the tails. So here's a general overview. We have the phosphate here, we have our glycerol molecule, attached to this, and then you can see these two fatty acid chains coming off the glycerol. So we call the general area of the phosphate and the glycerol as being the head, this area shaded in blue, and these two are called the tails. So now it's got some sort of polarity to the molecule. And when you see this in models it tends to be displayed more like this. The head is usually a round structure looking like a sphere, and the two fatty acid tails are just depicted as if they look like two tails. This is how you tend to see one single phospholipid. So the phospholipid molecules behave in a particular way because of their structure, and we're going to look at the behaviour of these molecules in water. When you have a phospholipid surrounded by water on all sides, the hydrogen ions which are found in the phosphate group start dissociating from that phosphoric acid. So here's our group again, a phospholipid, with the glycerol in the centre here, and we can see the attached phosphate head linked to this glycerol. This used to be phosphoric acid, but now the phosphoric acid gives off some hydrogen ions when the water surrounds this molecule. So submerging this all in water causes this phosphoric acid to give off hydrogen ions. This is what acids do in general, they donate hydrogen ions. So what we end up with is now that it's lost those hydrogens, the phosphate group has a negative charge. So if you compare the diagrams, originally we had H's on these two OH's. Now we have two O's and they've lost their H's. So each one has given off an H+. This is all surrounded by water. And because they've lost positive charge, these oxygens now each have a negative charge. So the overall phosphate group has a negative charge. And molecules with a charge, so this negative charge, end up being what we call hydrophilic. So this phospholipid head is now hydrophilic. 
A hydrophilic molecule is a molecule which is attracted to water due to having some sort of charge. So looking at the word hydrophilic, hydro means water and philic means to like. So the phosphate head is hydrophilic and it likes water, it's attracted to water. So we know the phosphate head is now negatively charged and water as a molecule is polar. So the phosphate head and the water are going to have an attraction to each other because this head is hydrophilic. However, the other part of the molecule is slightly different. The fatty acid tails attached to the glycerol are not polar and they're not charged. They don't have any ions or any polarity in their molecules. So we call them hydrophobic. A hydrophobic molecule is a molecule repelled by water due to not having any charge or polarity. So hydro again meaning water, but phobic meaning to repel. So this time, these fatty acid tails have no charge and no polarity. And if you were to bring a water molecule towards these, it would simply bounce off and try and get away. So now we know that the phospholipid head has a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic end. And this causes the phospholipid to have unique behavior when we mix it with water. The phospholipids may form a layer on the surface of the water. So here we have a body of water and we can see that the hydrophilic heads are facing the water because they are attracted to water and they have the negative charge in order to be attracted to it. However, the fatty acid tails are hydrophobic, so they face away from the water and try and get away. So you can see this layer starts to form on the surface of the water. Phospholipids can also form a monolayer of phospholipids called a mycele or a micelle. So what we've got here is we've got a sphere shaped structure and we've cut it through the middle like this and the sphere is surrounded in a watery solution. So water surrounds the mycele. And again, just as it did with the other diagram, the hydrophilic heads will face the water because they have that negative charge on them, whereas the hydrophobic tails cluster away from the water in this core of the mycele where there's no water to be found. And what you can say is that they exclude water from being in the center. So the tails all push together in the middle and all of the water is squeezed out to where they want to be attracted to the phosphate heads. Not only can we have this monolayer called a mycele, but they can also form a bilayer. A bilayer has bi, so that means two, and a layer means there's two of these layers. And what we have is these layers kind of mirroring each other. So the phospholipids on one layer arrange themselves in this way, the other layer face them in the opposite direction, and what we have is an aqueous environment either side. So the watery environments are wherever the heads are facing. So we would have a watery environment above the bilayer and below the bilayer. And again, the fatty acids in here are hydrophobic, repelling the water to the outside. The phospholipid bilayer is one of the most important structures in all of life. The phospholipid bilayer is an integral part of all membranes in a cell. So remember, in a cell, especially eukaryotic cells like our own, we have a cell surface membrane which is kind of the ultimate barrier of the cell. And we also have organelles inside with their own membranes, like the Golgi and lysosome. And both types of membrane involve phospholipid bilayers. So in a phospholipid bilayer, the structure means that the hydrophilic heads form two rows on the outside facing the watery environment, while the hydrophobic tails are sheltered in the middle. So if we have an aqueous environment inside and outside, the hydrophilic heads face outwards because they can be attracted to the water, and this is on both layers, whereas the hydrophobic tails face away from the water because they don't want to be associated with the molecules. So the tails get sheltered or sandwiched in the center where there's no water. Looking at the phospholipid layer from above, the phospholipids are allowed to move around and past each other, which keeps the membrane quite a fluid environment. So overall, they're still attracted to each other, but the phospholipids can move around each other and sort of dance closely together, meaning that the membrane is actually quite fluid. And this is important that cells can become more fluid to change their shape and move around too. But the main result of this structure is that they will never expose the hydrophobic tails to the water, and so the membrane is kept stable. So these attraction forces are keeping those tails inside and they're keeping the membrane in the same general shape all the time. The phospholipid bilayer in membranes has a lot of important roles, and without it, no organism would really be able to survive. 
So it's the structure of the phospholipid bilayer which allows the cell membrane to carry out important roles and have important properties. First of all, it's a barrier, so it controls the substances entering and exiting the cell. Secondly, we can have electrical insulation, so it can prevent certain ions from entering or leaving, keeping the ions and the charge concentrations correct in and outside of the membrane. Because of the structure in the phospholipid bilayer, the area in the middle of this kind of two-layer structure is a non-aqueous environment. And the reason for this is because the fatty acid tails almost force the water to be excluded from this environment. So the water only exists outside or inside of the membrane, not within the membrane. And so because of this, it makes a barrier to any charged particles which are dissolved in water. So usually, if we have a charged particle which can either be positive or negatively charged, they usually exist surrounded by water molecules in a solution. And this is how they are dissolved in a substance. So because they're dissolved, they can't go through the barrier because the water is not allowed to go into this hydrophobic tail area. So if the water can't go in, the ions can't go in either. So they're not permitted to pass through this barrier at all. Therefore, there are only certain things that can get through. Only small, non-polar molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide can easily pass through the membrane. So the reason for this, for oxygen to enter cells when they're needed for respiration, and for carbon dioxide to leave the cell as a waste product, the reason they can do this is because they're both small, so they can easily weave between the molecules, and they're non-polar or non-charged. So they're not surrounded by water, they can go through on their own and squeeze between the tails without bringing water into this environment. So what this means is that we end up with membranes being partially permeable, allowing it to control what enters and leaves the cell. And remember, cell contents need to be maintained, and this can refer to concentrations of ions, it can refer to certain solutes, and lots of other things that need to be kept the same. So having an effective barrier, which controls what can enter and leave the cell, and what can't enter or leave the cell, is very important in keeping these two environments separate. The partial permeability of the membrane also allows it to act as an electrical insulator. So in a lot of nerve cells or neurons, we have a myelin sheath where cells wrap around and they can act as an electrical insulator, meaning that electricity and charged particles cannot pass through these parts of the neuron. And the reason that it insulates against charge is because the charged ions cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer. So as we said before, when we dissolve ions in water, they're surrounded by water molecules. And if water can't get through, then these ions can't get through either. So it keeps the charge in the right proportions inside and outside. And this whole thing acts as an electrical insulator. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.